Justin J. So I actually used to have this uh, podcast, and I was a writer on the world of professional wrestling for about seven years. I had a podcast for the last year, year and a half of that, and like a common theme was making references to the Rockies franchise. So I appreciate Toby you throwing out the final countdown for me. Um, my name's Justin. How are you guys doing tonight? Yeah. yeah. So I've got three kids. And, you know, common theme is if you got three kids, it's like, oh, kids say that. It's so easy nowadays. And, uh, yeah, I walked uphill both ways and all that shit. And I'm not lying. And it wasn't the snow. It was in New Jersey. But for me, the biggest, the biggest example of this is pornography. So when I was growing up, Right, I got when I got to really first experience porn the way most people did used to up until like the last twenty years, which was at the art museum. You know, <laughs> so that Renaissance porn, right? <laughs> and uh, you know, you're sitting there walking through the art museum. You're like five years old, and you get a stiffy because there's you know this big, nice, thick ass Ma Mother Mary <laughs> breastfeeding a baby Jesus. <laughs> And like 25 years later, when your firstborn son comes, you realize, I got milk fetish. <laughs> and it's probably from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. <laughs> then I grew up a little bit more, and back to the walking uphill both ways, the town I grew up in, there must have been like one or more older people who had access to Playboys, because I'd find Playboys on the side of the road. And they'd always be soggy. Like, they always wait until it's raining to chuck his, a Playboy out their car. And there was never something racy like a penthouse or a hustle. It was always a Playboy. And if you ever read like a classic old school Playboy, they're super tame. It's just like some woman sitting there with her boobs out, and she's like, I'm 19 and I've got big boobs, and you're 58 and you haven't seen boobs this firm in the last 40 years. And it's just like, like, I would actually get more of a thrill going back to the Renaissance art books in my mother's uh, bookshelf. And at least then I could see some rescue. <laughs> and then, I was, you know, growing up in the mid-90s, I actually was the first person I knew to get a modem and the ability to access pornography online. This was like, before we really had the internet, we had bulletin boards. And he'd be sitting there connected to his bulletin board. He had a call phone number and prayed to God that nobody had called and call, uh, call waiting would disconnect you. And you see they're watching this photo down the like lines that like dots at a time like dot 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 dot. You see they're trying to jerk off and you're like dot 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 dot. I left you. It's like dot 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 dot. And like finally you're like oh god she's blonde. Thank you. But but you know when you're 14 you're like blonde brunette. You don't you don't have the privilege of a preference. You're just lucky to see a naked woman. And um. One of the reasons, and then what would happen is that you're sitting there, and like by the time you're ready to come, you're like, you barely get to a collarbone. And so I learned sexual stamina from the internet because I had to wait so long just to see a pair of nipples. Like, it'd be like, I've got to last at least 15 minutes just to get to see some nipples. So, growing up like this, right, you know, these teen playboys, Renaissance pictures, shit like that. I don't get to, I didn't get to learn the sexual education that my kids have on tap. For me, the way I learned about eating ass, I was with a young lady, and uh, we're sitting there, we're having sex, and I'm on top, and all of a sudden, I feel something warm and wet around my asshole. I'm like, that feels really good, what is that? And I look back, and it's her dog. It's like this 80 pound Irish setter must have thought that my ass smelled like a milk bone. And he's going to town on this shit like it's a fucking toilet bowl. You ever watch a dog drink out of a toilet bowl? That's what this dog was doing to my ass. <laughs> and it was like such a conflict, because I'm like, on the one hand, it's a fucking dog, and this is not consensual. I did not give a verbal yes. Sorry. Well, on the other hand, it felt fucking good. <laughs> so, it's kind of scary, you know, having kids and knowing that they've got all this 
access to this kind of spilt and smut on their phones, and sometimes they gotta check their phones and see what the latest trends are. You know, I'm like, oh, that's new. I should go look this person up on my phone. But I'll say this in closing. The one thing I do kind of miss though about the old, the good old days, right? Those playboys, those soggy playboys racing home from school, using mama's hair dryer to dry them out, <laughs> hoping that the pages were stuck together because of the rain and not because of the <laughs> 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 I didn't have to worry about Wi-Fi dead spots in the house. I could just run to the bathroom, get my shit done, and leave. Now it's like I gotta like strategically jerk off around my house because certain parts of my house, like half my bed is outside the Wi-Fi zone and half my bed's in the Wi-Fi zone. And I'm sitting there like I can't get too I can't get too wild because I'm like, oh, shit, fuck, I gotta switch to cell only. And then like I guess like my cell phone coming gets tired of all this stuff and watch on my phone and they start like slowing it down. I'm like, no, 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 no. And you try to like, like skip ahead to the good part and you're like, no, 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 like it's, it's just stuck now, fuck. So Playboy has its advantages. Patrick, I'm ready to hear your freestyle, man. Thank you. Have a great night.